Hey, friend, Chris Van Viver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today in our 30-day series, I want to bestow to you the top 75 key commands I use in Logic. Now, 75 key commands are a lot, but I do really use these all the time. There's a couple thrown in that are updated with the most recent update of 10.5 that I think would be helpful to many people. But again, these are all the key commands that I've committed to memory, both in muscle and in my brain. The way this video is gonna work is I'm gonna go alphabetically, starting with key commands that actually aren't associated with the letter at all, and then start working through the different letters and really just honing in on the key commands that I use. So we'll start with A and what A is, and then other A key commands, B, what is B, and then the other key commands. I think key commands in logic are fantastic because 90% of the time, they're associated with a key that makes sense, at least to my brain. Since we have a lot of key commands to cover, we're gonna just fly through this video Okay, let's get started. Number one in our key commands is spacebar, which begins and stops playback. I use this probably the most out of anything. Super easy. Number two is return, which returns us to the beginning of a project. However, if we're in the live loop section, return has a slightly different feature. It will begin playback of any queued cells or scenes. Super helpful. Number three is option apostrophe. And I use this a lot when I'm setting up a session for mixing because option apostrophe drops markers anywhere where the playhead is. That's really helpful. So often I'll play a project that I've received and just start dropping markers as I'm listening. Number four is command and the arrow keys. Hold command, press either left or right arrow. We can zoom in horizontally. Hold command and up and down, and you can zoom in vertically. Number five is the comma and period keys, which allows your playhead to jump forward and backwards, bar by bar. Number six is the command plus and minus keys. So let's zoom in here, just so we can see. Hold command, press plus, and you can start to expand the waveform view within the regions, minus to shrink it back down. Now moving into the letters category. A stands for automation. So we can either view or hide automation and logic, very helpful. Following that is command A to select all the regions in a project. I find that very helpful when combined with Z for zooming, we're skipping ahead. But if I'm zoomed way in, I can just select all, hit key command Z, brings us to the full project view. B is for smart controls, which is our handy control set when we don't wanna dig into plugins, but also works really well with controllers as well. Control B allows you to bounce regions in place. And this could be one region at a time or multiple. So control B brings up the bounce regions in place dialog. Or if you need to bounce an entire track in place, select your track, control command B. The letter C enables or disables the cycle range. Following that, option C opens the color palette and command C is classic for a Mac. That's copy and we're gonna skip ahead again. Command V is paste. D shows or hides the list editors. I don't ever use these, but I know folks who do, so it's good to know. Command D duplicates a track. And Control D, which I love, if we select this region right here, Control D, and we bring up the drum replacement doubling dialog. So you can choose your drum sound and you know adjust the threshold and replace or double your drums. E is to open the different editors. So let's select a region. We have the track editor. We select a MIDI region. We have the piano roll editor. It would be the same if we selected a drummer region, pattern region, or anything else. Command E allows you to export tracks. Key command F opens the project browser, which used to be called the finder. So that's what I keep in my brain is that F is for finder, but just remember it's the project browser instead. And command F shows or hides flex time or flex pitch. Now I don't believe anything in here actually has flex pitch enabled. So let's select this and set this to, I don't know, slicing. And now we can see flex times enabled for this region. Command F to hide the flex view. Key command G shows us the global track lanes. And shift command G allows you to take a series of tracks and create a summing track stack of that selection. And these tracks, all of their routing now is going to bus six. Bus six is the track stack, very helpful. Shift G is really helpful as well. If we select these tracks and we create a new group and we'll just call this group one, Shift G disables all grouping in logic. So if you need to make an edit to a specific track within a group and you don't want to affect all of the tracks in the group, just Shift G 
to enable and disable groups. Each will reveal or hide hidden tracks. Now we need to have a track that's hidden first. So control H will hide a track and then H will reveal the hidden track. And command H is actually universal across your Mac. It just hides the application that's in focus, just like that. I opens the inspector or hides the inspector. Command I allows you to import tracks in your session, but I just usually just drag and drop. J allows you to join tracks together or regions together. So J is going to join these two MIDI regions to a single MIDI region. For audio, if they're not side by side, if we hit J, Logic's going to ask if we want to create a new audio file. The letter K turns on the click, which I think makes a lot of sense. Command K will show or hide the musical typing, which is very helpful. Option K will open the key command menu, which is definitely something you should get comfortable with. L turns looping off or on, so L, turn it off or on. Command L will allow you to learn a new controller assignment. So I've never dug into this, but this is the menu that you would use if you want to assign a knob on your MIDI controller to a specific function in Logic. And Option L, which is new, shows the live loops grid only. Now the letter M will toggle channel strips mute button, so we're either muting or unmuting this track. If we make a selection of multiple tracks and hit M, we mute all of these channel strips. Control M, which I actually prefer more than the letter M, allows you to mute a specific region or unmute it. And Shift Command M, which is pretty helpful, reveals the stereo output within the tracks area, or you can hide it. N allows you to open or close the score editor. I just think the word notation, so I think N for notation. Option Command N, is for opening a new track, so software, drum, or anything else. And option N to show just the track view only. So option L for the live loops, option N for the main tracks area. O opens the loop library, which is fantastic. Option command O allows you to import a movie, which again, I just drag and drop. And shift command O will show or hide the movie track. P is for the piano roll. Option Command P is for the notepad, and Shift Option P is for selection-based processing, which we just covered not too long ago. Q is for quantize, so let's select these notes and set the grid value to something like that. Okay, let's just move it a little off. Hit Q, perfect. Command Q is for quit, which I think many of us should be accustomed to. R is for record, which is incredibly helpful. In fact, let's select everything and mute all the tracks. Now let's create a new track and we'll just set the audio to, I don't know, input something. Record enable, hit R for record. Beautiful. Shift R is for capture recording, which is just amazing. Let's pick this old school key track and we'll open the musical typing here. And capture record is awesome because I can just play something. We don't even have to be recording. and then use Shift R, and there it is. So if you end up noodling around and coming up with an idea that you really like, just hit Shift R and Logic will populate it, which means Logic is always listening, so be careful. Command R allows you to repeat a selection. So we're repeating this region, but if we go into the Piano Roll Editor here, select these notes, key Command R, and paste them to the exact same place in relation to the grid, which is awesome. Or if we make a marquee selection, so let's, make this selection here like that. Command R, look at that. Copies and paste based on the selection. S is to toggle the channel strip solo, so the opposite of mute. We can solo this track. We go into the mixer, make a selection, hit S, beautiful. Command S, which you better know, is to save. And option Command S is to open a new software instrument. T opens the mouse tool menu. And Command T, which is one of my absolute favorite key commands, so Let's select everything, unmute. Let's select this region here and bring the playhead right about there. Command T to split regions based on where the playhead is. I find this very helpful if I'm trying to line right up to the grid with any sort of edit. Control T is also a favorite. If we select one of our auxiliary channel strips or a channel strip that's not in the tracks area, Control T to introduce it to the tracks area. U, which sets rounded locators. So let's select a region, hit U. Okay, we had good success with that. Let's hit U now. Okay, not too bad. Let's adjust this region actually. And let's set the cycle range there. 
hit you, you can see that the cycle range is being set to the bars. It's not specific to the region itself, but command U sets the cycle range specifically to your selection. So if we select a couple of regions, let's select these, I guess, command U specific to that selection. V shows or hides any plugins that are open. So V to hide them, V to reveal them. And like we covered earlier, command V is to paste. So command C to copy, command V to paste. W will show or hide the audio file editor. And this one might excite a lot of people. If you use Shift W, you can open an audio region in an external file editor. I don't know if I can do this with this region. Let's try. I can't. So let's kind of zoom out here. And let's drag in an audio file from my desktop. Let's drag this in. Okay, and then use Shift W. And now this audio region that I dragged in is going to open in RX8. And it even has the markers, which is pretty cool for whatever song that that file was a part of. That's really awesome. X is to show or hide the mixer. Control X, which I love, is to open the remove silence dialog or strip silence function. And Command X, which is universal across your Mac, cuts but also copies in the same shot. So let's select this region, Command X, go down here, Command V, there it is. Y opens the library. Z is for zoom, so let's select this track and zoom. Command Z, definitely a function you should have under your fingers at all times, is undo. And Control Z will zoom the selected track. So now if we press up or down on our arrows, we can view the selected track in full focus. So that was a ton of key commands. Not a lot of personality in that video, but these are the 75, 76, however many it ended up being. These are the key commands that I rely on day in and day out. I use them all the time. And the only key commands in this video that are new to my workflow are related to the live loops grid. So I'm still kind of getting acclimated to those. And in fact, let me just drop with you too. Option B reveals both the live loop section and tracks area side by side. So I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the YouTube channel, YLogic Pro Rules or subscribing on the website itself, ylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.